In this video we're going to look at electrochemical cells. These can either generate electrical energy from chemical reactions, in which case they're called galvanic or sometimes voltaic cells, and these have standard cell potentials which are positive, or electrochemical cells can use electrical energy. These can drive unfavorable chemical reactions. These are called electrolytic cells, and unfavorable chemical reactions have cell potentials which are less than naught. In both types of cells, the terms oxidation and reduction and the terms anode and cathode refer to the same processes. Oxidation is always loss of electrons, reduction is always gain of electrons, and oxidation always occurs at the anode, reduction always occurs at the cathode. The names anode and cathode aren't defined by the charge of the on the electrode, they're defined by what happens. Oxidation always occurs at the anode and reduction always occurs at the cathode. So here's the galvanic cell that we used in the cell potentials video. Zinc metal is reacting with copper ions to make zinc ions plus copper metal. So the oxidation is happening at the, in the anode, the zinc metal is going to zinc 2 plus, and the reduction is happening in the cathode. The copper ions are going to copper. We add the two half cell potentials for the oxidation and the reduction to give us our positive standard cell potential for the whole cell. It's a galvanic cell, cell potential is positive. And here's a typical cell. So on the left hand side we've got zinc metal in a solution of zinc ions and on the right hand side here we've got copper metal in contact with copper ions. The two are connected with a wire but also with a salt bridge that might contain something like potassium nitrate, potassium ions and nitrate ions. It's got a positive cell potential, it provides us with electricity, we can use it as a battery. So what's going on? Well at the anode the zinc metal is going to zinc ions and two, two electrons. So these electrons are liberated onto the anode and becomes negatively charged and the zinc ions go into the, to the solution. Because we've got cations going into the solution that cell will get positively charged unless anions from the salt bridge flow in in order to balance those extra cations. The electrons that are liberated flow through the wire from the anode to the cathode so that at the cathode reduction can occur the copper ions gain those two electrons to make copper metal. So the copper ions are taking electrons from the cathode and the cathode becomes positively charged and this time because we're taking cations out of solution we're removing cations we have to replace that lost positive charge from the solution and cations in the salt bridge flow in. So here's our cell again. Electrons flow through the wire from the anode to the cathode and we measure our cell potential and when that happens anions in the salt bridge flow into the anode and cations from the salt bridge flow into the cathode. So galvanic cells have positive cell potentials. They're chemical reactions that would have happened anyway which is making them happen in a galvanic cell to produce electricity. An electrolytic cell has a standard cell potential which is negative. It's an unfavorable chemical reaction and we can use electricity to drive that unfavorable chemical reaction. So for example, the reaction between zinc and copper ions to make zinc ions and copper, we can do the reverse. We can make zinc ions react with copper to make zinc metal and copper ions. As long as we provide electricity, as long as we provide a potential which is greater than 1.1 volt. So here's an electrolytic cell. We're providing power to make this reaction occur in the opposite direction to its normal behavior. So we're reacting zinc metal with copper ions to make zinc ions plus copper. So on the left hand side again we have zinc metal in contact with zinc ions and on the right hand side we have copper metal in contact with copper ions. We connect them together with a piece of wire but we now are going to provide power so power is going in rather than us getting electricity out and the circuit is completed with a salt bridge that contains cations and anions. We need to make provide enough power to drive this reaction in the opposite way. So the normal cell potential is 1.1 volts. We need to provide enough power to make this reverse. We need to provide at least 1.1 volts. So in an electrolytic cell, we provide power to pump electrons through the wire from the anode to the cathode. Oxidation still occurs at the anode, but now it's the copper metal which is being oxidized. It's being oxidized to copper 2 plus and two electrons. And the power is withdrawing those electrons from the anode, so the anode becomes positively charged. We make copper ions that go into solution, and in order to balance those extra cations in that solution, 
anions in the salt bridge have to flow in. So we pump electrons through the wire from the anode to the cathode so that reduction can occur at the cathode. This time it's the zinc ions that are being reduced, they're being reduced to zinc metal, and as we're pumping electrons to that cathode, it's the cathode that's negatively charged this time. We're taking out zinc ions from the solution, so we're removing cations from the solution, and in order to make up for that, cations in the salt bridge flow in. So here's our electrolytic cell. We're providing enough power to reverse the reaction to get it to go the opposite way. That power is being used to pump electrons through the wire from the anode to the cathode. The anions in the salt bridge flow into the anode and the cations in the salt bridge flow into the cathode. When we set up an electrolytic cell using water solutions like we just did, we could also get the possibility of electrolysis of water. We could oxidize or reduce water instead of our cations and anions. Only cations in solution that have a higher reduction potential than water can be reduced. If not, it's the water that is reduced. We can only oxidize anions in solution that have a lower reduction potential or a higher oxidation potential than water. Otherwise, it will be water that will be oxidized. And if the redox potentials are in the water range, then we could get both things happening. 